Well, everybody has another conversations with, and I'm Dick Vaughn. And you know, today I'm really excited because uh, I want to introduce a new member of our team here at TV Charlton. Uh, a lot of you folks don't realize, but we have one of the top techies in the country, uh, Drew Anderson, who does all our production and all our uh, technical equipment. He's on the team, and but today I'm delighted to present Nina Jarowski. Now, Nina is going to be joining us in a whole new capacity because Nina is a student at Shepherd Hill Regional High School right here in uh, Dudley and Charlton. And so uh, what she's going to be doing is bringing programs to us and let us know what's going on up at Shepherd Hill. And she's a delightful young lady. So, Nina, I want to welcome you. Thank you. It's great <laughs> to have you with us. Now, one of the interesting things about this young lady, to give you an idea of a little background, that uh, in, when she was younger, she was a ballet dancer, and she loved to dance ballet, and then tell us what happened all of a sudden. I want to become a district attorney. I lost my passion for ballet. Sadly, I did. But it brought me to a better understanding and a better passion, which is law and the, becoming a prosecutor or a district attorney. Good. So now you're a junior at school. Right? Yes. So you'll be next year getting ready to find a school to attend. Yes, I am. Well, you know, the thing that's interesting, now I'm going to guess, but most young kids, when they're asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would think the last thing I could think of, especially for a lovely young lady like you, would be to bellow out, I want to be a district attorney. <laughs> you know, I would think, oh, I'd like to be a doctor or a nurse or a school teacher or whatever. Mm -hmm. What made you decide that you wanted to go into law and be a district attorney? Well, my, I got my first glimpse into the whole law field was my mom. My mother went to, to law school, and ever since she went to law school, I've always just been gravitating towards the whole law field in general. When she went to law school, I would actually go with her to her classes and sit with her and learn about it, like kind of early on. And I've just always been super interested in the justice system and in the Constitution. And I, I just have a calling, may you will, for it, I guess. I have a passion for it. And a district attorney really grabbed my calling is because they get to give a voice to those who don't necessarily have one or who aren't necessarily heard. And I think that's a great thing to have, a great power to have, especially in times like today. And Oh, is it ever? It, it, look, it always look, is, but. Well, but. You know, just look what's going on in Washington right now. Yeah. With all these controversies mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and members of the Congress who are outspoken in various mm -hmm. areas, and they're talking about firing them, getting rid of them, yep. and then we have the impeachment trial coming up. Yep, yep. So, you know, and it's all based around the Constitution. Yes. So it, it's intriguing. But I'm, I'm, really, um, I'm really amused, and yet I'm, I'm really excited for you, you to see that you're really know what you want to do mm -hmm. because most young ladies and young gentlemen as it happens who are juniors in high school really oh they have fantasy thoughts you know yes. I, I'm going to be I'm going to be I want to be a big star or whatever mm -hmm. it is but really don't have a focus and I think the thing that has really impressed me is that you really have focused and and know exactly what you want to do you even know where you want to go to school Yes. You know, and what school you want to go to. And, and I think that in itself is terrific. Thank but you. let's talk a little bit about some of the things we're going to be doing. Because you're going to have your own program, and you're going to be sitting here doing these programs with people from Shepherd Hill. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure by now you put a lot of thought into this. Yes. And so what are some of the things that you, you see you doing? Well, I really want to start off with interviewing some of the teachers. And I have a thought of interviewing a couple of the teachers and staff in the language department. I want to see their view on whether or not you th they think that language is taught enough in schools. Because over the course of my high school experience, I've been there s since 2018, there's been a cut on a lot of language. And I'm just curious on why that's happening. That's one topic I'm really interested in. And I also have a couple of friends who are 
leaders of a lot of clubs in my school as well. And they're, like for example, like show choir is a really big part of Shepherd Hill. And they've, they're, they're a wonderful team. They do a lot of things and a lot of competitions. And with COVID going around, I want to just get a better understanding on how process is going on, like how many practices going on. And I think that's a really interesting topic as well. And also with sports, I want to interview some of the students who are like, let's say, captain of the cheerleading squad yeah. or captain of the football team or, you know, captain of the soccer team, which is going yeah. on as well. And as long with their coaches, I think that would be a really interesting topic as well. Well, you know, it's interesting. You talk about language. I have a, a good friend who teaches English at one mm. of the high schools. And I was chatting with her a while back, and she is very, very, very concerned mm -hmm. with young people in high school. Yeah. She says what they really have is they have two great thumbs. Mm -hmm. She said, but the dilemma becomes, because all they do is text, and they have codes like BTW and yeah. LOL, and <laughs> all the little codes. She said they have no vocabulary. Mm -hmm. They can't write a sentence. And she said the biggest problem, they're very difficult to converse with because they don't talk anymore. That is very true. Rather that than call somebody true. or talk to them, they text, text. them. Yep. And, and she said, so that the bind is when they have to sit down and write an essay to go to college, what are they going to do? Yeah, they're stumped. They're stuck. <laughs> because they have no vocabulary, mm -hmm. you know, and, and she said, and it's sad. And she said, it really concerns me that, the, that, that our language, and I, re, I, I remember is when I went to school, we used to have to diagram sentences and, and, and yep. you know, and really learn how English gets put together. Mm -hmm. but, but she said that they're getting away from that. So to your point, that may be an interesting conversation. Yeah, I've noticed it a lot too. It's very noticeable in school. They're cutting Many back classes. on languages? Uh, yes. They've got, yes, they have. Because mm -hmm. when my sister, my sister's 24 now, but she, when she was in high school, they had Latin, oh, they yeah. had French, they had Spanish. Oh, I, we had, when I went to school, we, we learned Latin and French. Yep. And now there's choices not to even take the language anymore. They must teach yeah. Spanish up there. Yeah, they teach Spanish and French now, but yeah. the classes are getting smaller and smaller, so it's... You know, and one of the other things, too, I, I uh, uh, when I first got into broadcasting mm -hmm. many, many years ago, I was up in Ware, Massachusetts, had a radio station up there, and the town was a third French, a third Polish, mm -hmm. and a third Irish. That was the breakdown. And the tragedy was, as the kids were growing up, the grandparents spoke Polish, mm -hmm. and the grandparents spoke French but their moms and dads got away from it. Yep. And then they never taught the kids French or Polish. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, they knew all the swear words. They knew all those, <laughs> but, but, you know, but they didn't really, a, a kid 15 or 16 couldn't sit down and talk Polish yeah. or have a conversation mm -hmm. with his grandparents in, in, in fluent Polish yeah. and, and, and the same in French. And I think that was one of the, one of the sad parts of the 70s and 80s, mm -hmm. because we got, you know, of course, you weren't here yet. Yeah, I wasn't. But the 70s <laughs> and 80s, we got away from those languages, mm -hmm. you know. And then, and then recently, now Spanish has become a big language mm -hmm. in America. So it, it, it's interesting. But I, I'm excited for it because I think it's going to give our viewers an opportunity to see what really goes on up there yes. and to get to know some of the people. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, uh, the choir. I know they have a marching band too. Yes, they, they have do. A, they have a great band, and and so and I know recently that three or four of the kids who played football went on to Boston College and then into the pros. Yeah. So they developed some talented young people, and uh, up up at the school. So those are things that are exciting, and I think uh, you'll be able to bring a lot to the table, and um, and let folks know what's really going on yes. from a different perspective. I mean, you know, a, a, as we get older, we, we form our opinions and so forth. But then to get a 16 or a 17-year-old's perspective on what's going on. Yes. You know, just as you mentioned, the, 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 uh, the uh, language slowly deteriorating mm -hmm. um, is, is an issue. 
And so you, you bring a perspective to the table that maybe the average person would never see, you know? Exactly. And, and so I'm really excited about it to have you join us because I think uh, it, it's gonna be an excellent, excellent opportunity, not only for you um, to learn a whole new skill, mm -hmm. but it's also gonna be an opportunity uh, for us to be able to present programs to the community that they might otherwise never get. Yes, you know? I'm excited. And, and so, and then not only that, but with COVID, we're going through a whole new learning process. Yes. It's not like it used to be. It is far from what it used yeah. to be. And so, you know, with all the demands and the pressures, um, it, it really puts uh, a whole new look on it. Yeah. And, and so I think uh, it'll be exciting and interesting, you know, uh, to hear uh, some of the programs that you line up. Now, we are also working on the possibility of having District Attorney Joseph Early yeah. join us. Probably we're looking, trying to set up a date for next week. Looks like it'll be Thursday. Super excited. And uh, <laughs> he's coming out and he's gonna do a program because they have some grant money for uh, the proms and for graduation so that the kids don't go out racing around in cars have you a know, safe post-graduation time. Yes. Because the tragedy is every single year we end up somewhere, someplace, you know, somebody wrapped around a tree, yep. you know, uh, a sad story of some mm -hmm. kid two days before graduation, they're having his funeral instead of his graduation. Yeah. So the, um, the district attorney uh, we've spoken to, and it looks like he's going to be coming out. So I'll have you come and you can sit in with us. And you can you can chat with them. So I think that'll be a great opportunity. Well, thank and I, you. Well, I'm looking forward to see his reaction when we tell him that you want to be the next district attorney. I'm coming for his spot. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, joke. no, but I think I, I think it'll be fun, and I'm looking forward to it because I think it's a great opportunity for you, and it's a great opportunity to have him chat with you and give you some idea as to what it's all about. Yes. You know, and hopefully we may even find you a spot in there. So you can, for the summer, you can go in and, uh, wouldn't that be a great thing? That'd be amazing. To be able to go in and, and work with the, with the district attorney. Under him? Uh, and what work a dream. In, and work well. <laughs> what better way to learn and I find know, out? that's amazing. You know, and not only that, but on a resume for college, mm -hmm. how is that going to hurt you? Very you well. You know, so I think it would be great. So that's what we're looking forward to. And I, I'm just excited. And uh, once again, I want to welcome you. It's you. Delight, I'm delighted to have you join the team and, and be part of us. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to some of the programs and some of the ideas that you bring. Well, I'm grateful to be here. Well, Thank I'm glad you, you are. And, <laughs> it, and it, it's, it's going to be fun. Now, it's not the same as ballet. No, I know. <laughs> OK? Yeah. And it's not law school. And, and, but you've got to have fun. Because I tell people all the time, Fun's the best thing to have. You know, I, I tell people, some of the days, I, when I used to run the radio stations, I'd drive home at night, and I used to be laughing so hard <laughs> at something I did, uh, said, uh, said or did that day. Yeah. I'd have tears rolling down my face, <laughs> because, because you gotta have fun, yeah. you know? And, and uh, if you have fun, you'll, you'll, you'll do well. So I'm really, really excited for you and for us um, to have you join us. So well, thank you. We're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to working with you. Well, that's good. We'll have a good, we're going to have a lot of fun. And, and I, and I, I know, uh, because I can tell already that you're really, you're going to be good at it. You're going to do the job and you're going to have fun. And that's thank what's you. most important. Thank so there you are, folks. <laughs> Here's our new star, Nina. <laughs> and that's it. That's a little bit of conversations with, and I'm Dick Bond.